And this is where many times leaders also fail. That God has spoken that you're chosen. It's not a guarantee that you will do well there. What is going to command the results you produce and the tolerance because that's another thing that happens in leadership. The fruit of tolerance that grows in you because that's where maturity comes from. You know, when we say people are brain to leadership, people just imagine that it's all about results, results, results. No, 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 no. One of the things that leadership also does is an opportunity for God to build your character. He will build tolerance in you. He will build submission in you. He will build patience in you. Because you're going to work with people. And without that, you know, place of broken, breaking with the Holy Ghost, taking time to be with him, you just jump in because they brought you. You will wound people. That's why you can see a leader is hated by the people they put him or her in charge of. And yet, those same people that are problem to you are working effectively with, with some other leaders. And you're wondering, sometimes a leader comes into an office and the person feels self -demean, um, demeaned. You start feeling reduced. I mean, every day is as though you are wrong. Are you seeing here? I mean, it's like you're not getting anything right. I say, ah. I know many times, many times, many times, people respond wrongly. The first thing you should remember is that you have never been here before. Say, hey, but I've not, you might have been a leader in some other organization, some other place, some other kind of responsibility. This is a new one. You need grace. You need discipline. You need understanding. But many times when that begins to happen, and reactions are coming from everywhere, from up and down. I mean, the leadership that puts you and the people you, that you are under, instead of taking time to pray, they start reacting and feeling reduced. I don't know, no, 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 I can't take this trash. Well, when you're true, you find out you never grew. You never grew. You lost out. Because there were things the Holy Ghost wanted you to learn. And that thing, it starts with taking time to pray and fast. Ah, you see here. We're dealing with fast in the place of election into office. You need it. Haven't been chosen. Let me show you what I mean. Let's get to the same Paul. Because you see how he came in. How he moved to ministry. Now let us see what, what made Paul what he is. Galatians. Are you still with me? Chapter 1. Verse 11. Okay. Um, let's read from verse 10. For do I now persuade men of God? Did you see that? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Next verse. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after me. Praise God. For I neither received it of a man, of man, neither was I taught it. But by what? The revelation of Jesus Christ. Now hold on a minute, pause. Does it mean Paul brought himself into ministry? No. The Bible showed us how he came into ministry. Acts 13 tells us he was anointed after fasting and praying. Right? So how come he's claiming here that what is preaching was not taught by men? There's something I want to draw your attention to. What is his primary calling? When God spoke to Ananias, he said he's going to stand before what? Kings. Rulers. 
and men, including the Jews, to do what? To proclaim my what? My name. So what was God's primary calling for his life? Preaching. Apostleship. Right? Now, he comes among apostles and prophets and they lay hands on him into ministry. Because that's where many of us stop. Because pastor or somebody that put it on you, that's where it ends. And then you think anything you have to do, you have to be told because you're a robot. It's not going to work that way. The man is anointed, follow his speech. He wants to, be, he wants to produce results in his calling. The first thing to office is not enough. Let's read. Because this is why a lot of Christians occupying offices are not having results. And because they cannot see with the eyes of the Holy Ghost, when you're trying to say, this is not it, they say, hey, you don't believe in me. You're picking him, blah, blah. All manner of reaction. Some even walk away from church. I said, that pastor is demanding too much. Because the pastor saw your future that you didn't see. He saw what that office was supposed to bring forth that you never saw. And what did the Bible say? Can two work together except they be what? In agreement. So you must see what I see. Are you see here? Somebody sits down in leadership and uses the head to think and think and think. I never took time to pray. And so... Because you've taught and analyzed and analyzed and you think this is the best thing to do, you now come and sit with your pastor, a he or a she, and bring that idea and say, I think this will work. And while you were talking, this was a man or woman that just finished talking to the Lord about the same matter and cannot come and be telling you because you are a subordinate. Okay, I've heard it. We'll, we'll look into it. You see? They'll never wake up my idea. Did you care to know if that was what God wanted you to do now? That it is great doesn't mean it is for now. Let's look at this. For I received, neither received it of man, neither was I taught it. But by what? The revelation of Jesus Christ. Did you see that? Just when they live by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Verse 13. For you have heard of my conversation in type past in the Jews' religion. How that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. Look at the word wasted. It was killing anyhow. And profited in the Jew, Jews' religion above many my equals in my own nation. Being more exceedingly zealous. He's writing to the Galatian church. Or the church at Galatia, one of the Grecian provinces in Asia. Being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. Did you see that? But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, go to Damascus and wait. I'm sending somebody to you. He gets to Damascus. The man prophesies over him, heals him, gets him filled with the Holy Ghost, gets him baptized in water. He's now filled with the Holy Ghost. He continues testifying. I was this, now I'm this. Living among preachers. And he gets to Antioch. And then the anointing comes on him. God has selected you. And they're all going to fasting. And hands are laid on him. He's talking about it. Now go to verse 15 again. But when he pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me. Now we didn't see this in any other place. But they prophesied about his calling. But how come they couldn't give details? Because details is your discovery to find out. It's the, un, it's the glory of God to conceal a matter and the honor of kings to search out the matter. If a man can know everything about your life and tell you everything about what you should do for God, you are finished.
Because that's where your glory and honor lies. Discovery of your place. Oh, I'm a pastor in LCM. Oh, I'm a cell leader in LCM. Oh, I'm a departmental leader. I'm a director. Whatever that thing entails, it comes by discovery. Otherwise, you keep working in the flesh. And there's something so clear about it. It doesn't matter how you made your mind to be involved. It's clear. The scripture says the arm of flesh will fail you. Meaning there will come a day you'll be exhausted. There will come a day you'll be offended and frustrated. You know why? When that day reaches, whatever you become is a sign of how you answered. Because the truth is, no man who has put his hand to the sickle by revelation can think of turning back. You know why? In that place of fasting and praying, as the Spirit of God is revealing His purpose in your life, self is dying by the day. The more you have time to fast and pray, the more drawn to His purpose you are. The more knowledgeable. Now, you seek leaders and Christians who are now serving the house of God by revelation and not by will. Is will important? Yes. But will without revelation will lead to exhaustion and frustration in the system. So you see people who always produce fleshy results than spirit results. So when the spirit of God says you can do this, they can't attain to it because they responded from the flesh. I want you to be a thousand when you attain. And the guy says, okay, we'll just do it because pastor said and every day you cannot put one and two together how one can become one thousand no matter how best you try you end at hundred and expect a praise you know why because you're a man of the flesh but the man of the spirit say god has spoken and goes back you are giving to fasting on your own they didn't declare it but now you don't want to come back and give excuse like the others i say lord you have spoken by your servant. One thousand. We are ten. How they can ten hit a thousand? Why you are praying? Marakabasha. I don't say anything, but Lord, you have spoken. Rakabababa. Then he comes under the anointing. In a fast, open the scriptures. It is in my word. One of you shall chase a thousand. And two of you shall put tens of thousands to flight. I mean, more than a quotation. Maybe pastor has been saying it. You've been reciting it. It comes alive. Your spirit picks it with ability. From that minute, you are standing up as a man that never thinks of a hundred anymore. If you are in a church of a hundred, you hate it. People can't understand why you can't take it. You are making plans for the city. You are planning with the capacity of a 1,000 man. Why? Because the revelation has fallen into your spirit, not your head. Not your head. Every time you are praying, you are calling for that man. Oh God, I'm a captain of a thousand. Pledges are coming. You say, my department is going to do this. And people are wondering, you're not mad. You have calculated. If 100 men can give this, 1,000 men should give this. We are 1,000, so Lord, we are giving this. I go and say, Father, I stood based on what you showed me. And the same scripture comes into reality. When you pray, believe that you have received it and you will have it. Because now you are responding by Spirit's revelation. That's what Paul is showing us. If you're here, say amen. I said, if you're here, say amen. Hallelujah. Let's round it up now. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it. But by the revelation of Christ, I live my life by the revelation of Christ. Hallelujah. Now, let's go to verse 16. To reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen. Now, Ananias talked about Jews, but God tells him specific information. You are saints to the Gentiles. Do you understand what that means? Hello? You know what that means? If he had confined himself with what pastor said at the onset, he would have been there. But at Antioch, God gave a bigger expansion. 
towards the Gentile world. Now he's hearing it firsthand beyond what was prophesied at Antioch. The assignment is becoming personal with God. That's where your fruitfulness lies. And in the place of praying and fasting, insight is given into those matters. And so people say, well, I prayed and fasted. If you're praying for three days and you didn't hear, what it means is go more. Don't stop till you find it. This is where Christians fail. Say, so we're praying and fasting. Okay. If, you, if God did not instruct it, if he instructed it for three days, then in three days you should get what you're looking for. Otherwise, he position well. But if you now said I was going to fast for three days to find out, and you go to the third day, you didn't find out. What it means is continue because you are looking for something. He says you will go after knowledge as one looking for lost treasure. Many times I hear pastors say, I, 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 I'm, I'm still I'm asking the Lord for wisdom. Asking the Lord for wisdom? You pray yourself into wisdom. That's why you have tongues. You stay there. If it didn't happen in day one, go to day two. If they have with day two, go to day three. But every day, it should not be drawing you away from it. Well, since God is not speaking, maybe, maybe um, he's hearing me, he will do it later. No, it's not like that. It's not like that. There are days when you just lock yourself. Today, if I don't find it, I'm not coming out. Today, everything stop. Why must this result not come by my hand? You know one of the things I dread the most? Now look at me. Is to think I've done my best over a walk and God brings another man to do that same walk and shows that it was my fault. All this while, I had reasons to give. I've done my best. Blah, blah. Then God brings another person to that same thing and you are surprised. The same walk, the same ministry, the same assignment. And they did it with so much ease. And you are wondering, how many years was I with this thing? The same thing with the city. And I keep asking myself, what have I not done? Because something can be done yet. And I must find it. You can't go into the place of prayer with that kind of spirit and come out without revelation. Why? He that seeketh, findeth. He that knocketh, the door shall be what? Opened unto him. The scriptures cannot be broken. Are you see here? Very yes, say amen. Now look at verse 16. And we'll stop at verse 19. So reveal his son to me that my preaching among the heathen immediately I confess with flesh, not with flesh and blood. Neither went I up to Jerusalem that way, which were apostles before me, but I went now. Does it mean he was rebellious? No, he's not dealing with because the Bible showed us that he always went to give reports. So, what is he dealing with? He's personalizing his assignments. So he said, This was when God called me. I did not go to see somebody and say, okay, explain what you want me to do more. They've already told you what God called you to do. So he said, I went up to Arabia and returned again to where? Damascus. Are you taking note of the encounters? Read on. Then after three years, did you see that? What happened between his conversion and the return to Damascus after his salvation and his sending forth encounter? Say encounter. Say encounter. Say encounter. Then he says, but other apostles saw I none, save James the lost brother. Now the things which I write unto you, before God I lie not. Afterwards I came into the regions of Syria and Sicilia, and was known by faith unto the churches of Judea. Now, you see the ministry that came out of Antioch. 
You know what that means? Paul would have failed. He would have been a nominal preacher. Because he was not... This was the one that God chose to replace Judas. Do you understand? But it didn't come in the time that the apostles would have thought he should have come. So they put other men there. But now the man comes and takes out time alone. Tell somebody, fasting is time alone. There are matters you must produce results with. You think, you ponder, you cry, you pray. You can have time for other things, but you must have that time to pray, to cry. And like I always say, it's not that everybody heard you before you know you are praying. Because you are not praying to me, you are praying to God. Are, are you see here? He said, he that seeth in the secret will do what? Reward you openly. So it's not when people say, ah, you are praying that you are praying. No. Your commendation is not made. Are you see here? It's not main. Stand to your feet and rule. This remaining days, that aspect of your assignment, ministry, projects, official projects, where you are struggling and doing everything, you're not getting results, as we fast and pray, the Lord will appear to you.